Less than one lap to go, and we'll be back. Green flag racing in the first heat race here at the Ch Salem Speedway after six and a half years of the track being closed. Jim Bartley, looks like it's a good field. Uh, Mike Cousin in double zero. Jerry Norris, a pair of real veterans. Yeah, Frank, they've been here before, but I think the one we're going to have to watch in this race is the newcomer, Bill Kimmel Jr. He's never been on this racetrack before until today, and Frank was real excited about it. We're getting ready to come around for the green flag. Frank, I'll turn it back to you. ARCA safety car pulls down on pit road, and the RPMs will come up. Norris is up through the gearbox in a hurry. Mike Cousins will look to the outside. Brett Williams in car number four now dropping down to the low side, and he runs at third. Joe Williamson now quickly coming up and challenging him. Williams is going to go for second on the field as they go down the back straightaway. Mike Cousins relegated to third on the field. Your leader is Jerry Norris, the former co-winner of the Salem 500 some years ago. He's your leader as they cross the start finish line down into turns one and two. Brett Williams in car number four, the two-time Charlestown Motor Speedway track champion, looks to the low side of Jerry Norris and a pair of Louisvillians battling for the lead down in the third banking. It's Williams in car number four along the inside of Jerry Norris. Norris getting extremely high up in turns three and four. Your new leader at the strike, steady Freddie Williams in car number four, the Conover's Body Shop Racing Pontiac Firebird, running at second on the field now. It's car number 88, Jerry Norris of Louisville, Kentucky, and then going third, a very strong third on the field. It's car number 11, Joe Williamson of Shively, Kentucky, in the Joe Williamson Racing Dave Olson's Transmission Center Racing Pontiac. And fourth, a good run tonight for Clarksville, Indiana's car number 69, Bill Kimmel Jr. running a good solid fourth on the field, but we've got a battle for second developing off turn number two and on the box straight away. Let's look at Joe Williamson as he moves in on Norris. Norris goes all the way upstairs, which is really the fast way around this track, but Joe Williamson's got the handling down underneath as they cross the start finish line down into turns one and two. Retiree from the race, car number 47, the Ford Thunderbird dropping out of this event. And we've got a battle for third on the back stretch. It's Bill Kimmel Jr. from Clarksville, Indiana, in car number 69, moving up in the third place on the field. Jim Bartley, the retiree, car number 47. Craig, uh, Phil Garvey looks like out of Charlestown, sponsored by Mike's Radiator Service. Looks like it run into a little problem there. Okay, your leader is still Fred Williams of Minor Lane Heights, Kentucky, in the Conover's Body Shop, Auburndale Auto Parts and Machine, racing Pontiac Firebird. Saw a little bit of smoke out of that automobile as he went down into turn number three and four. And here comes Joe Williamson in the Dave Olson's Amco Transmission Center of St. Matthew, racing Pontiac. At second place on the field, we're going to have a battle for the lead here shortly. They'll move down into turns three and four. Once again, a wisp of smoke from the back of Freddie Williams' automobile as they move in on Middletown, Kentucky's Carl Wheeler down the front straightaway. Wheeler in car number 34, the Middletown Heating and Air Conditioning Racing. IROC Z28 goes one lap down. Your leader is still Fred Williams of Minor Lane Heights, Kentucky. Running at second now, it's Joe Williamson of Shively, Kentucky in car number 11. Your third place running automobile is Bill Kimmel Jr. in car number 69. And they are slowly getting together down into turns one and two. Pretty soon it'll be a three-car lap. Uh, uh, draft for the lead as they come off turn number two. Down the back straightaway. Kimmel is really on the attack, uh, Jim Bartley. Frank, he's really got it coming on here now. I, I watched him earlier. He's really getting around good. Of course, you know, Joe had to switch engines this afternoon. He had to go all the way back to Louisville, put another motor in, and he's got it going real well. It's the first time on a track for this motor, I believe. Fred, you know, Fred also had to put a rear end in this afternoon. So this race right here, the first and second place cars, had a lot of problems before they ever got on the racetrack. Of course, Bill Kemble has had no problem, and he's really catching him. Really closing the lead right now on Joe Williamson. And the field will move down into turns one and two. Mike Cousins of Jeffersonville, Indiana goes one lap down. Fred Williams of Minor Lane Heights, Kentucky is still your leader. He is the two-time new and late model champion of the Charlestown Motor Speedway at the wheel of the Daryl Brown-owned Pontiac. Running at second now, it's Joe Williamson, seven-time NHRA drag racing champion from Louisville, Kentucky in his Dave Olson's Amco Transmission Center Pontiac. And then going third, a good strong run tonight for Bill Kimmel Jr., a second-generation driver in the John Jones Chevrolet uh, GM City IT&T Financial Services Racing Pontiac. The top three cars remain about the same as they cross the start finish line down into turns one and two. Fred Williams in car number four. He's sponsored by Conover's Body Shop and Auburndale Auto Parts and Machine. Moving in on longtime friend and competitor, car number 88, Jerry Norris. Norris goes all the way upstairs, and once again, Freddie Williams has put uh, Jerry Norris at least one lap down on the field as Bill Kimmel Jr. in car number 69 pulls down to the pit apron and out of this event. 
Down the box straight away. Williams is flat running away with this event, Jim Bartley. Yeah, I love it. Freddie's really got her going here. You know, I hate to say it, Thursday and Friday both, we were over working on Freddie's car, and he's he's really got it going, you know, just absolutely perfect here. Joe's having a hard time staying with him. Fred, he started when he qualified, he wasn't going into the corners as hard as he could. He's feeling a little bit better with the car. They had to change the gear. Going into three and four, he looks great. He takes the perfect group. If you stay below that white line, it's the fastest way. The first, the top white line, if you go all the way up to it, it's not quite as fast. And Fred's definitely got the fast track right now. A tremendous run for Freddie Williams, and once again, Jim, this could be probably the highlight of his racing career. I know those two uh, new and late model division championships at Charlestown really had to mean something to Fred, but to win this first race at Salem Speedway after the track has been closed six and a half years. Oh, uh, there's no doubt about that, Frank. You know, Fred, we were over talking, and Fred said, well, you know, I was two-time track champion at Charlestown, and but he said, Salem is just something different. He said, when I was a little boy, it scared me when I looked at Salem, but he said, now he's a little older, Fred's birthday was, I think, Thursday. He loves it. He just loves this track. He's just flying around here. We should have uh, about three laps, I think, Frank left. And that's why they call him Fr uh, Steady Freddie Williams of Minor Lane Heights, Kentucky. Frank also noticed that Joe Williams' car, who went home, and just with correction, he went home and got a new motor for his car. Got a little smoke coming out of the rear of it as he gets out going in the corners. Definitely not tire smoke. Looks like engine possibly could cause him some problems here in a little while. Okay, so there you have it. That's your top two runners, Fred Williams of Minor Lane Heights, Kentucky. Joe Williamson in car number 11 already fighting mechanical ills once again for the second time today. Running at third on the field is car number 88, I believe, of Jerry Norris. And the white flag is coming out this time by for Freddie Williams of Minor Lane Heights, Kentucky. Down into turns one and two, interval between first and second place. Uh, full straightaway as Williamson moves down the back straightaway. That's Freddie Williams, excuse me, down in the third and fourth turn. He'll come up on Jerry Norris, who will not go one lap down. And here comes the checkered flag out for Fred Williams of Minor Lane Heights, Kentucky. Running across the line at second in an ailing firebird, car number 11, Joe Williamson in the Dave Olson's Hempo Transmission Center Racing Pontiac Firebird. Crossing the line at third, from Louisville, Kentucky, unofficially Jerry Norris. There he is high in between turns three and four in the John Franconia trucking Dixie Haulers IROC Z28. And then a good strong finish tonight for Mike Cousins, I believe, who really remained under power tonight in car number double zero. He's out of Jeffersonville, Indiana. And Carl Wheeler in car number 34 running, I believe, with one axle tonight, Jim. Yeah, you know, in qualifying, Carl could not get on the throttle. This is his first time on this racetrack. First time in a late mile this year, Carl's rookie year. And, uh, you know, i just tell you, it takes some real guts to get out here first time in one of these cars and try to run 135 miles an hour down the straightaway. And if you're on this racetrack, going into that corner, it's like a brick wall. You don't know where to go except left, because if you go right, you're going to hit the guardrail. Carl did a fine job. Okay, so our congratulations go out to Fred Williams of Minor Lane Heights, Kentucky, in the Conover's Body Shop, Auburndale Auto Parts and Machine, Woody's Auto Sales, and Darrell Brown Racing for picking up the first victory here at the Salem Speedway after six and a half years. And upcoming pretty soon here will be the second heat race. We'll, it'll be a tremendous show. And then the McDonald's 150. Stay tuned. On this one. And let's have a look at the second heat race here at Salem Speedway. Inside row number one is car number 100, and that's Buddy Cole from Indianapolis, Indiana. Outside of him is car number 9X, and that's Tony Wilkins. Back to row number two, and it's car number 49, Al Grog from Warren, Indiana. And outside of him, it's car number eight, Tony Johnson from Louisville, Kentucky. Moving on in the lineup to inside row number four, and it's car number five, Dwayne McGunagill from Eaton, Indiana. And outside of him, it's car number 22, Cliff Setz from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Indiana, and then on back, bringing up the tail, will be car number 4X, and that is Jim Spillers from Fort Wayne, Indiana. And that's the starting field for the second heat race, and this is the faster qualifiers, Jim Bartley. That sure is, Frank, and of course, we got Tony the Tiger Johnson. Tony, uh, this is the second motor tonight, his third motor this week. He put a motor in this afternoon, as did Joe Williamson earlier. Uh, Put it straight on the racetrack, qualified it, and he's sitting right here in the second row outside. Real good spot for him. We've got uh, the 100 car, which is uh, sponsored by a race itself. And, uh, you know, sitting on a pole, you just can't do that bad in this track. So you kind of got to watch him also. And the field will come out at turn number four. The green flag is out. And the second heat race is underway as they move down into turns one and two. 
Car number nine out front. That's car number nine X, and that's Tony Wilkins down the box straight away. It'll be Tony the Tiger Johnson dropping down into second spot on the field as they move nearly three wide down in the third banking. Car number 100, Buddy Cole running at third, and then moving up the fourth is car number 22. Down into turns one and two again. It's car number nine X. Tony Wilkins out front. Running at second is Tony Johnson. They've hooked up in a tight two-car draft and have pulled away from the rest of the field. They're down the back stretch into turns three and four. Whoa, car number nine all the way up close to the outside retaining wall. Tony Wilkins, Tony the Tiger Johnson will take a peek inside. Besides not, he'll come back in line. Bumper to bumper down into turns one and two. The battle is for the lead as they come off turn number two and down the box straight away. Tony Johnson of Louisville, Kentucky, your new leader down into tur in the, uh, turns three and four. Nearly gets together with car number nine. And then we've got a change up for third. Coming off turn number four. Sets of Fort Wayne, Indiana, running at third on the field. Going fourth, it's car number 100, Buddy Cole from Indianapolis, Indiana. He's got a good battle there with car number five, who looks to the inside going into the third banking. He's going to try a slingshot. Car number five and car number 100. And that's Dwayne McGunagill moving up into fourth. Good battle for second now. It's car number 22, Cliff Sets, looks to the inside of car number 9X, Tony Wilkins, and takes over second. Down the back straight away. It'll be car number five now moving up into the third place position. And that is Dwayne McGunagill side by side out of turn number four. Takes over third. Tremendous running here at Salem Speedway in tonight's heat race event. It'll be Tony Johnson of Louisville, Kentucky, who remains your leader on the back straight away. But car number 22 is really closing in. Cliff sets of Fort Wayne, Indiana, as they're nearly bumper to bumper out of turn number four. Stretch and into turns one and two as car number 100, Buddy Cole, has pulled out of this event. Good tight two car draft out of turn number two and on the back straightaway, Tony the Tiger Johnson goes all the way up to the basement into turns three and four into the attic, should I say? And car number 22, Cliff Sets, remains in second place. Sets will look to the inside of Johnson. They're side by side into turns one and two. Off turn number two, new leader, Cliff Sets, car number 22 of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Tony the Tiger Johnson now relegated to second place on the field, going third. A good strong run tonight by car number five, Dwayne McGunagill, and he sets the targets on Tony Johnson going into turn number one. Dwayne McGunagill and car number five moving along the inside of Tony Johnson. They're side by side on the back stretch and into turns three and four. McGunagill on the low side, Johnson all the way up high, and it looks like Johnson gets a good bite coming off turn number four. He remains at second on the field as McGunagill gets a little bit loose coming off turn number four. Your leader is car number 22, and that's Cliff Sets of Fort Wayne, Indiana. And then it's about a 15 car length interval back to second place, and we've got a good battle once again coming off turn number four. Car number five, Dwayne McGunagill. Moving it on Tony Johnson. Johnson remains at second place. McGunagill will seek the opportunity to the inside as they come off turn two. McGunagill now runs at second on the field. Tony Johnson going third. And then we have a, a, a new top runner moving into the lineup. And it's car number 4X, Jimmy Spillers of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Spillers running at fourth place on the field. He looks to the inside of Tony Johnson as they come off turn number two. Down the box straight away. Tremendous running for the lead for car number 22. Has about a 10 or 15 car length advantage off turn number four. And that's Cliff Sets of Fort Wayne, Indiana in the Setzer Motors Harps Garage Racing Firebird. Running at second on the field is car number five. And that's Dwayne McGinnigill from Eaton, Indiana in the UB Machine, Napa, and Jones Body Shop Racing IROC C28. And now we're watching the battle from third on the front straightaway. And that's Tony Johnson in car number eight, the BNR Speed Shop Timeout Sportswear Racing Pontiac. And that battle for third is, uh, I believe, over with because uh, his competitor there, car number 4X, Jim Spillers of Fort Wayne, Indiana, has dropped down to the pit area. They continue to circle the Salem Speedway, and we've got a tremendous battle for the lead shaping up as they come off turn number two. Down the box straightaway. It's car number 22, Cliff Sets of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Down into turns three and four. Moving into second is car number five, Dwayne McGunagill from Eaton, Eaton, Indiana. And they are nearly bumper to bumper now down into turns one and two. Jim Bartley, it looks like a good run for the lead. I sure does, Frank. You know, I was watching the 22 car. He takes a real good line as you watch him going into three and four. See, he keeps the car about halfway on the white line, right in the middle of the corner. That's the ideal way around. If you get too high, the track's no good up there. 
Your number five car, I think, is Cliff uh, McDougall, or however you pronounce his last name. He's trying to get under him there. That's that's perfect. Now, if you just get a little bit of bite coming off that corner, you'd have no problem whatsoever. But you can get the bite down that low. Cliff's holding him down. Beautiful line these cars are taking here. You know this half mile high bank racetrack is that is uh, is definitely frightening for the drivers. Yeah, you know, it's just it's hard to imagine running down through there, running in that wall, just being just nailed down by G-force. And uh, so we're looking back up into three and four, same line, identical. If you can take the same line, it's the fastest way around this racetrack. You know, these ARCA officials as they're flagging the race, I'm watching them as the cars go by the slower cars. They tell them what to do. You can't help but see them guys hanging over. We're, getting, we're gonna have a white flag coming out here as he passes the start finish line. But you can't help but see them. They tell the slower cars to move over. And they give them the okay sign as they go by. They let them know how things are going. And here's the white flag. Definitely, one more lap to go, Frank. I'll turn it back to you. It'll be Cliff Sets of Fort Wayne, Indiana, and the Setzer Motors Harps Garage Racing Pontiac on the point as they go down the box straight away and in the third three and four, moving into second place and still remaining there, and I believe he'll be content with that position. Car number five, Dwayne McGinnigill of Eaton, Indiana. The checkered flag's out, and your winner, car number 22, Cliff Sets. Finishing across the line at third will be Tony Johnson of Louisville, Kentucky in the BNR Speed Shop Timeout Sportswear Racing Pontiac Trans Am. And then it was car number X49, uh, I believe, crossing the stripe unofficially at fourth place on the field. And uh, that is Al Grog of Warren, Michi or Warren, Indiana, in the Walden's Auto Parts Racing Chevrolet. So it looks like, uh, Jim Bartley, what would you say, a, a very uh, good finish, I, I believe, for car number 22. Uh, it looks like uh, he really took command here about the midpoint of the event. Yeah, Frank, he felt, probably felt comfortable at that point. I guess that's the best way to put it. You know, it's kind of like going to a haunted house as you come to Salem for the first time. Six years we've laid here, we had a tornado try to wipe us out, and uh, this track's tough. And to drive it, you got to be tougher. These guys are tough. One man from the Derby City area, all the others from out of town. And, uh, you know, it's hard to pick these drivers when they're from out of town like this. We don't get to see them that often. We, knew, we know how Tony does. Uh, he's got a real fine car, and Tony, t in practice, he was running right up to the wall. It's not quite the fastest way, but it was for him at that point. And uh, these guys, boy, they've got to really feel great to come out here, be one of the first ones to be back on this speed speedway. And uh, you definitely got to give uh, Don Gettlefinger just a, boy, you know, big thank you, because he's brought racing back uh, as far as high speed. We're off the short tracks, which we love them dearly, but these, these big tracks like this, half mile, high speed, it's great, and his fans are just loving it. Well, I'll tell you what, you mentioned it was a haunted house, and uh, i tell you what, uh, it, the race tonight is being held under the strangest conditions. As you've noticed during the course of this last event, the lights have come on for the first time, kind of like putting lights in uh, Wrigley Field in Chicago, you might say, but the lights are on tonight here at Salem Speedway, and uh, uh, looks like a pretty good crowd has turned out. If we can pan the cameras around, take a look at that uh, infield, uh, it looks like we do have a pretty good uh, crowd in the infield tonight. You'll notice a few of the camp fires burning and it looks like a, just a tremendous crowd has turned out in the main grandstand which holds 5200 people and it looks like it is just about oh just uh, 80 percent filled up here tonight on the opening night uh, six and a half years ago uh, this track closed and this is the opening night and uh, I tell you what we've really got a show in store for them tonight and the McDonald's 150 coming up shortly here at Salem Speedway we'll take a break in the action And here's the starting lineup for the third heat race. On row number one, it's car number 07, Rusty Adams from East Lake, Ohio. And outside of him, Greg Pike from Louisville in car number 47. We'll go back to row number two, and it's car number six, Royce Mason from Fort Wayne, Indiana. And outside of him will be car number one, Bob Blount. Going back to row number three is car number 38 in the lineup. And that is Jeep Flume from Cincinnati, Ohio. And outside of him will be car number nine, and that is Fred Hall of Wyoming, Ohio. Moving on to the fourth row, it's car number 21, and that is John Vallow. And outside of him will be car number 40 in the lineup, and that is Bruce Vanderland. And I believe he is the fastest qualifier here at the Salem Speedway on opening night. The Arca safety car pulls down on pit road, and they'll pick up the RPMs in turn number four. The green flag is out. And our third heat race is underway with Greg Pike out front in the IROC Z28, the young driver from Chablis, Kentucky, in the Charlie's Auto Supply Racing Camaro. 
Dropping down into second on the field. It's car number 07, Rusty Adams. And then going third will be car number six, Royce Mason, as they come off turn number four. Mason's got quite a battle with him with Keith Flume in car number 38. Flume will look to the low side of Mason as they come off turn number two. Down the back straightaway, and Flume nearly reels in car number 07, Rusty Adams. Flume will look to the inside, nearly making contact as they come off turn number four. Completing lap number two, Mike's out front. Running at second on the field is car number 07, Rusty Adams. Jeep Flume to the inside now of Adams, and they're side by side on the back stretch. Into the third, fourth turn, bank 31 degrees here at Salem. Adams still in second, Flume will go third and fourth. A good run for Royce Mason in car number six. And then going fifth on the field is car number one, and that's Bob Blount. Down the back straight away, Flume's got his man in the third banking. Jeep Flume moving up into second place on the field. Car number 07, Rusty Adams dropping back the third. Car number six at fourth, Royce Mason. Your leader is Greg Pike. Let's look at that interval between first and second. Louisville, Kentucky driver Greg Pike on the point. 15 car length separation between himself and Jeep Bloon, Jim Bartley. Now, Frank, Greg was out here earlier this afternoon at practice, and I tell you, he looked great. He was absolutely flying around this racetrack. He'd go anywhere he wanted to. As we look back into the field, we see Jeep running second. You know, with a name like Jeep, you got to be able to go where you want to. As he passed the third place car, he went where he wanted to, down low. Looks like he's trying to reel in Greg Pike. It's going to be a real job because Greg is a pro. Greg's got a beautifully prepared car by his father. It is a homemade chassis. It's not a Howe or any of these fancy cars. Greg's dad, Larry, built this car. And, yeah, I mean, he built it from scratch. He started out box tubing, built it all the way up, and here he is leading the heat race at this time. They continue to circle the Salem Speedway. We're going to look back at about third place position on the racetrack. We've got some tremendous racing off turn number two. It's car number 07, Rusty Adams at third place on the field. Royce Mason in car number six going fourth. At fifth will be car number 21, the winner of 30 feature events. John Vallow of Miami, Ohio. Down the front straightaway and into turns one and two again. Vallo will look to the inside of Royce Mason now coming off turn number two. Down the back straightaway, car number 40 is going to look into that battle as well. And those four automobiles are getting together up in turn number four. Off turn number four and down the front straightaway. It's car number 07 continuing to run well at that third place position. And that's Rusty Adams. Car number six, Royce Mason nearly making contact. John Vallo will move up and take over fifth. Going down into turns three and four, car number 40 now, looking all the way to the outside of that battle off turn number four, and that's Bruce Vanderlaan of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Battle for the lead off turn two. On the back straightaway, the young driver from Louisville, Kentucky, car number 47, Greg Pike, who has run well at Cincinnati, Ohio's Queen City Speedway. Down the front straightaway and into turns one and two. And once again, this is the battle for the lead. 47, Greg Pike in that white IROC Z28 and Jeep Flume. And car number 38 continuing to run at second place, and they're nearly bumper to bumper in turns three and four. Off turn number four and down the front straightaway. It's still Pike, car number 38, Jeep Flume running at second. He's from Cincinnati, Ohio. And they're bumper to bumper once again off turn number two, and I don't believe we're going to get a shakeup for that lead position, Jim Bartley. I'm afraid Jeep's kind of been kind of, you know, casing Craig, uh, Greg out there, pulled up on him earlier, and this is a racetrack you definitely don't want to make contact on. You're running down here 135 mile an hour down the main straightaway. You know, your car as you go through the corners is just on the verge of losing it. You gotta be right on the edge, as they call it. I mean, the edge is you fall one side or the other. You make it or you're over. You're down, you're messed up. Chief's really working on Greg. He's got that line. He, he thinks he can get underneath him as he comes out of the corner. As, as he goes through one and two, he's down low. That's where he's gonna have to get him. Greg pulls down on the racetrack. That's the way to block the man behind you. It's legal. It's not It's not being honorary or anything. That's the way you drive your race cars. You protect yourself, your position. Okay. Car number 40 now, Bruce Vanderlyn, has moved up into third place position. He's from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Car number 40, Bruce Vanderland from Grand Rapids, Michigan, running at third all by himself. Here comes car number six, Royce Mason, looking to the inside of car number 07, up in between turns three and four. Mason can't pull the move off. Rusty Adams maintains a good fourth place running at this time. Royce Mason and car number six right there. And then it's car number 21 in that, that trio as they come off turn number two and on the back straightaway. John Vallow, 30 feature wins, but I believe it's going to be a sixth place run in the heat race tonight, Jim Bartley. 
He can't quite get around them there, Frank. They're all working hard. You know, our, our, our lead is exactly like it was. Greg still got the lead. Jeep's still trying to get around him, trying to make that low track out. And as I mentioned earlier, you watch. Oh, he's going to try him on the outside a little bit. And he, no, back to the inside. You know, you, you, you pick a line, you work it. You know, if you. If you've been on a racetrack before, you know how your car goes. You know the best way around it. You watch your driver. You pick your time, the moment you think you can make your move. And Greg's holding that line, coming off the corner, absolutely just perfect. Greg's got one lap left, and then Mr. Pike will be able to claim this one if he can hold it. Greg Pike, car number 47 of Louisville, Kentucky, set to win the third heat race here at Salem Speedway tonight in his Charlie's Auto Supply powder keg. Bar and Lounge of Charlestown, Indiana, sponsored by Rock Z28 as the checkered flag comes out. Crossing the line at second, a good run tonight for Jeep Flume from Cincinnati, Ohio. Here's the run for third. It's car number 07 crossing the line at third, and that's Rusty Adams of East Lake, Ohio. And then a good run at fourth, car number six, Royce Mason. And he's out of Fort Wayne, Indiana, finishing up at fifth. Good run tonight, guard number 21, John Vallow. We're used to seeing him win feature events. This was a heat race. Uh, perhaps he'll do better in the 150, Jim. Well, that's yet to come, Frank, and the excitement will never stop. You know, one thing that you got to say is real good. Two boys from the local area on a racetrack that nobody's seen now for six and a half years. They've all looked at it. The grass grew up. The, you know, the retaining walls fell apart. It just uh, it was a ghost town, as I said earlier. Two local boys come back, and they just absolutely knock them dead. You know, one thing about Greg. Greg's car looked just like this when the year started. He hadn't put no paint on it because the man is a clean driver. He doesn't touch anybody. He doesn't mess with anybody. He's on the racetrack. He passes him on the outside. He don't bump you out of the way. And, uh, you know, what can you say? But congratulations, Greg. Excellent job. So there you have it. It's nearly a storybook story here. Uh, excuse me, a... A uh, very good story here tonight on opening night here at Salem Speedway, uh, right out of the uh, storybooks. Two Louisville drivers, uh, uh, nearby residents, uh, winning the events here tonight in the first and third heat races here at Salem, Indiana. Coming up shortly, the McDonald's 150.